by forensic psychologist Sarah Soderlund and paranormal investigator David Erickson. State of Mind is a show that features mentalism, mystery, and modern psychology with twists of cognitive process and challenges of the mind. News, discoveries, banter, and guests that talk all things fascinating. Join them every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern, only on ParamaniaRadio.com. If it's paranormal or something spooky that you want, then this is a show where you will hear all about it. Join Scott Morrow, host of The Fearless Ghost Hunter, every Saturday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Paramania Radio Network. expressed and the opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Paramania, its affiliates, or its sponsors. You are listening to Paramania Radio. Parasearch UK radio show with your hosts Kerry Greenaway and Jay Lynch right here on Paramania Radio. Good evening everyone and welcome back to the Parasearch UK radio show. Didn't that sound so smooth at first? Hi! Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, hi Kerry, how are you? I'm really good, like really good. She's really wound the Uh-oh. freak up tonight. Oh my god, I've got Did full bits right on. Did, uh, Did I get some sleep tea? Um, a little. That's all I can say. All, all she said, all she heard was, "Did you get some?" Yeah. Uh, did I get some? No, no, I didn't get some. I got some sleep, um, and that was probably about oh, twenty hours ago. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. Carrie's in a wild up mode. Jay's in his normal dickhead mode. So obviously, Teresa's with us, and Doctor Dave's here too. Hi, Doctor Dave. Silence. And I don't know yeah, what that is. You know, it takes me a second to switch over. <laughs> I love doing that to you, though. Let's switch a... into like host mode, or not, you know, like host mode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he wants to host tonight. Well, shit, maybe drop. Yeah, my off you go, Dave. <laughs> well, if I was the host, this is how the show would start. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get this right. <clears throat> Welcome to the Parasearch UK Radio Show. This show is rated NR, not rated for. <laughs> and it's well, anyway, so I go, go somewhere down the down that road, but anyway, <laughs> I'll just stop myself before I go too far. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really because I don't know. Jay's a jackass. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, but I that's would. okay. I don't mind it. I, I enjoy being <laughs> I a jackass sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jay's a bonus on there. <laughs> we we really do, folks. We've got a topic tonight. Uh, we'll see if we can not stay focused on it. Uh, I know the other night I was listening in to a uh, big and uh, funky ghost a go go show, and they were talking about how they go off the rails. Them guys stay so close and so tight to the tracks, it's unreal. They have not really listened to me and carry that much if they think that they go off the rails. That's true. Or me and you. That's it's almost like a challenge is on the table as to who can go off the rails the most. <laughs> and poor Dave just cringes. <laughs> like, my radio station, what are they doing to my poor radio station? <laughs> well, you know, and we were supposed to see if Chris and Wayne from the Chris and Wayne show could have joined us tonight, and things just didn't work out. We will get them on here one night with us. And when that happens, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. I just, yeah. 
I'm actually thinking. I'm actually thinking. Could you imagine a f- six-way? <laughs> An eight-way, <laughs> isn't it? Because it'll be Teresa, Dave, oh. Chris, Wayne, Luke, Vinny. Yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my god! No, well, I can't. You know, know what I have to say about that? I get Chris first because I don't like sloppy seconds. <laughs> 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 See that just reminds me of a joke, but I, I, this is a this is a pun and joke time. This is supposed to be semi serious conversation about something paranormal, but you know, Carrie being in this kind of mood is paranormal. That's it's true. out of the norm. It's it doesn't norm. happen very often, does it? I know that's why I want to take advantage of it. Oh, don't take advantage of me, Jay. Well, no, advantage of me. But that's a different show, different channel. <laughs> don't have to be a different channel. So I kind of. Right, okay. So we was hoping to do this. <laughs> I'm going to try and bring it onto topic. Um, uh, we were going to try and do the Chris and Wayne thing this week. However, it didn't work out. So we had to find another topic. And it's carrying a good mood, a topic. So, skinwalkers. I found an article on something called a skinwalker, which I'd never come across before. And you me. No, I've not heard the term before. I think it's that's isn't that Native American? Yeah, yeah, that's. See, it's like skinwalkers, like I don't know, a Native American burial gun in my backyard. It's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> See, for you guys, you're like, yeah, I know what a skinwalker is. I was like, what the hell's a skinwalker? <laughs> so I thought, you know, you're a tracker, you do the Bigfoot thing, and you know, we, let's have a look at this topic tonight. And a weird kind of topic that we can talk about. Oh, my God. Honestly, I do find these topics. Why do I find weird topics for this show? This is a a question. (laughs) Because we want to be relevant and cutting edge. Hmm. True that. Damn, I'm done with my intelligent shit for the night. Back to being me. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, tell me your perception, because I say it, this is a term I've not heard before. So, what is a skinwalker? Well, it, it depends on what, what region of the country you're in and what Indian tribe is associated with the definition. I think there's different ones, various ones and stuff, from what I've experienced and stuff and heard. What about you, Dave? Him under the bus again. <laughs> He's gone quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me, huh? Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I've always well, uh, I've always thought the skinwalkers were were just uh, you know Native Americans had the that allegedly had the ability to transform themselves into other animals and so forth, but but uh, they have more of a negative connotation in most in most legends mm-hmm. and, and most of them associate with turning them into a some form of canine which is why haven't they found like skin uh, what do you call that where it schleffs off yeah yeah schleff, they found like a that? snake schleffs yeah. this haven't they also found those and, and they, they said that was associated to it and that's where a lot along along the lines of a lot of uh werewolf things where they when they in the movies where they change from one form to the other that they find the skin where they, you know, the, the, the skin of the wolf falls off of it and it's a person inside of it and all that crap. Right. So that kind of drives from that a little bit. But, but like Dave said, a lot of them are associated with uh, many animals, changing to almost any animal. Some, there's, I can't remember what tribe it is. The skinwalker can become any animal it pretty much chooses to. And Navajo. some of them, yeah, I think it is a Navajo. You're right. And then some of them, I think it's the Apache, that they're pretty much like a uh, uh, half dead. And when they a uh, canine when they turn, they're almost like a uh, cat, a dog man zombie. They're kind of rotted and hollowed. Lovely. Ew. Oh, I only know these things because I listen to the guys talk about and, and doing research to work with uh, the dog boys and the uh, North American Dog Man Project. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the articles I I saw was they are frequently seen as coyotes, wolves, foxes, eagles, owls, or crows. Right, my logical mind goes, surely that's just what you've seen. <laughs> oh, you know. But, but it is but, a Navajo thing, isn't it? Navajo. 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 Navajo Indians from the Alapaca Mountains. <laughs> from the Alapaca Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, shit. You want to see what I'm going to pronounce next? I tell you, you think that was bad. Um, in the Navajo, Navajo. language, oh. Navajo language, it's got to be a hole in there. Um, the word skinwalker is <laughs> ye nagloshi. I can't tell you pronounce that right or not. Yeah, I can't speak Navajo. So <laughs> it was, so clo- sure it was close enough. Not right. it, it was I'm sure enough. that's not right at all. <laughs> no, I mean, my, my but, but it literally, well known... But it literally translates, with it, he goes on all fours. Yes. Yeah. So it's basically something that walks on all fours. But also takes man's form. That's why it says he walks on all fours. It's a man goes down to a dog form. It just on. seems like a good old werewolf kind of thing in that in that aspect it would be and that's where when with the north american dogman project the dog boys and things when we discuss it we always say that it's absolutely not a dogman because that's the difference it's it, that's more along the uh, lycanthrope process and things where you mutate from human to to canine to back to human where dogman doesn't it's that creature all the time it doesn't mutate to human form or anything like that. that's that's lycanthropy Man, I yeah. can't use big words I'm so I was going to say, I'm impressed. I'm actually really impressed with you, Jay, there. Did you know they've got a, a place in uh, Yeah, Utah? Texas. Texas. Uh, Richard uh, said in a, in a chat room, doesn't Skinwalker's own a ranch in America? It's the, called Skinwalker, Skinwalker Ranch. ranch. It's, it's down actually, Texas. And... It's actually in um, southeast of Ballard, Utah. Oh, is it? It's yeah, all kinds of stuff's been going on there. UFO sightings, uh, dog yeah. land sightings, government cover-ups, supposedly. It says it's, it's a property huge. located on 480 acres. In fact, Chris and Wayne just did a show about this a couple weeks ago. It is allegedly <laughs> the site of paranormal and UFO-related activities, and the name is taken from Skimwalker of the Navajo legend concerning malevolent witches. Yeah. And that's the, which one? The Skimwalker Ranch. But what Indian tribe? Navajo. 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 Oh, Jesus. Navajo. <laughs> That's like cup of joe. I can't help it. Gotta get a cup you of know, joe. You know, I know. Just, I was yeah. taught in because... the phon- phonetic system that you say words as you see them. It's got a J but, in it. It's Navajo. Sorry, guys. But, but, well, <laughs> it's like we the though, But you got to remember a lot of our uh, <laughs> a lot of our language, on, especially out in the Southwest and stuff, is related from the uh, Spanish and Mexicans who used to actually have that yeah. country until we came in and took it over. Well, this is true, but, you know, foreign languages, God, that's a whole new subject. English is a foreign language for me sometimes. What's that that's Briar true. accent I got? Like, clearly, clearly I never passed so, those exams at school. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. I barely managed English. Anyway, um, so, okay, so is it a thing? Do people go hunting skinwalkers as much as they do Bigfoot? I don't think they go hunting because they're... There are groups that do that, but but that goes into a portion of the paranormal that I enjoy is is that's to me this mythology and urban legends, right? And the, and uh, some of those are the same as anything else. There's a grain of truth somewhere in there. What's the actual grain of truth, and and why? How did it mutate to become the story? And 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 like I said, it doesn't go with just the Navajo. It crosses all bears of across the country, at the, at the North America with different styles of different beliefs into it. Some of them even believe that they can become, like you said. Canines and also owls and crows, but some believe they could become like deer and things like that. There, there's different types and stuff across the country, depending on what tribe and what region they're in. So, is this another case of things appearing to us as we expect them to appear, rather than so going on an elemental front? Is it just another way of something appearing as we would expect them to, or is it a whole new entity? I, it's kind of like Bigfoot. Uh, I, I tend to yeah. gravitate towards the elemental side of it, but it's it's not what we expect. Uh-huh. I think it's something we can't explain. Sorry, I've just read the chat room. Yeah, is, is it, it Louisville, Louisville, or Louisville or Louisville? No, it's Louis. It's not even. It's not even. It's not Louis, and it's not Lou either. It's Louisville. No, yeah. Not even that. It's Louisville. You guys at Louisville? Yeah. yeah. It's all. It's all Louisville. mushed in together. It, it's like it's like in Baltimore, Maryland. And I grew up in Maryland. It, they they don't say Baltimore. They say Balmer, hun. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Oh. It's Balmer, hun. 
I'm so not going to manage in America. People are not going to know what I'm talking about, are they? Because no, I mean, gonna, I'm going to Louisville. Louisville. They're going to enjoy it. And they're going to say, please say it again. Please say it again with that pretty little accent. They're, they're they're like, like, where the hell is that? We don't know a Louisville. We, we know where it's at, but we know that you're not from around here if you say it that way. Ah. Trust me, somebody from Georgia don't say Louisville. They say Louisville. Yeah. Or Louisville. Oh, okay. They say Louisville. So it's, it's a regional thing. Oh, okay. So, so keeping and keeping with Carrie, according to Nava Joe legend, <laughs> a, skin, a skinwalker is a medicine man or witch who has attained the highest level of priesthood in the tribe, but chose to use his, his or her power for evil by taking the form of an animal to inflict pain and suffering on others. To become a skinwalker requires the most evil of deeds, the killing of a close family member. That literally mm-hmm. becomes humans who have acquired immense supernatural power, including the ability to transform into animals and other people. Ooh, other people. So would I, that kind of be like a doppelganger? Yeah. It could be if it became that. Yeah, that's like shape-shifting shape shifting on a different level, isn't it? Right. Right. I mean, the articles I was reading, because there is a film as well in 2007, but we'll go on to that in a bit. Um now, they said that they – see, I don't know how people know this. 200 miles – they can cover, allegedly, 200 miles in a night. No, how, how do people know that? They don't. They're good. Exactly. It's like, it's like, I mean, that's I something that we like know said, that – One was seen at, at point A, and 200 miles away, another one was seen, so they assume it's the same one because it looked the same. But that I don't think there's any way you can prove it. You can't. It's like saying that that you can that you can prove that ghosts are attracted to EMF or you met EMF fills. <laughs> Whatever. Right. See, this is the part of the legend I really love, though. Others have spotted an animal-like figure peering in through a window. According to Navajo Skinwalker legend, they are seldom caught. Those who do track a skinwalker and learn of their true identity must pronounce the name of the evil one in full. Once this happens, the skinwalker will get sick or die for the wrongs they have inflicted against others. Ooh, that's uh, no chance against me. I'll be like forever trying to pronounce the name right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, that's a good thing that doesn't work on the rest of us. People would be saying my name all the time. I'd be like, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm our names are with... so simple in the UK? <laughs> but there is a thing of power in a name, isn't there? Yes. They say so. Tell me your name. Tell me your name. Say it's a common name. thing. Say <laughs> Say my name. Say my name, bitch. Say my name. That's the stand in a half. (laughs) Anyway, I'm on a different show again. (laughs) I knew this was going to go south at that point. (laughs) Um, But they say that, don't they? There is power in a name. If you can get your um, evil adversary to share their name, then you have power over them. So that kind of ties in. Is this just a load of folklore myths that have been sort of like bunched together under the Native American Navajo um, banner. To, <laughs> I love Teresa's giggling in the background. Um, I was woohooing you. <laughs> woohoo, got it right. Um, to uh, just create another myth. No, this isn't something that – this was there before us. American or settlers or Europeans or whatever right. came over here. This isn't part of our thing that we've created. This is actual true Native American legends, lords, and mythology. I thought this was a more recent thing than that. I no, it's been around for a long it's time. It's been around for I, a very long time. Ah, see, I I sort of found found out information, and it looked like it had only been around from '96, roughly. No, that's when that's when yeah. we we start talking about it, making movies and stuff about it. That's that's when we got a hold of their legends and stuff. There's Tons of Native American legends and stuff, and like I said, I'm a very tribal based and stuff. And but there, if you look at some of them, like like the Skinwalker, it covers from coast to coast, from border to border. It's just a variance and differences in each tribe in each region, kind of like Bigfoot. I mean, the uh, Cherokees claim to have battled them all the time. They 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 refer to them as another tribe of men and call them the Blue Men. Okay. And they they talk about having complete battles and wars and how they would come in and steal their women and children and stuff like that. I mean, so it, it's, it depends on where you're at and what region. You go up to the uh, Washington State, 
the whole different thing with the Bigfoot out there than what it is here in the, in the Cherokee area. So, you know, I think I saw the them in stuff. Vegas, the Blue Man Group. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty good. See, I've heard of like the Blue Man thing in regards to ufology, and the stealing of the children is a fairy law thing over in the UK. Right. We call them changelings. Right, but that's what I'm saying. When when you, when you guys, when you guys, when you guys came over here and became us, <laughs> when when we brought our European police over here, we found out that. that that's, but that's where I go back to. But that's where I go back to Senator Ford. There has to be some kind of truth in this because the Europeans had that same thing about some kind of spirit or something like that, stealing children thing. The Native Americans, the Asians, all these people who supposedly didn't have contact for the longest time. Have these same legends based upon their mythology and things that shows some form of semblance of either some form of truth in it or where we all generate from a common point. Mm-hmm. One of the two. True. Now, Richard has put in the chat on words and the construction of words is the earliest form of magic. That's why we spell a word. And I, I know this from some of the work that I do. It's incredibly important. Um, how you say things, which is why I make sure it's all written down before I go into uh, that kind right. of work. Because, <laughs> you know, can get can go wrong with a wrong pronunciation or two. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Max. Max, Max, Max. <laughs> oh. Oh, my goodness. I have to say, it was one of those folklore, like you said earlier on, it's a folklore kind of thing with skinwalkers. And then I wondered if it tied in with the... Ah, I know they're like completely different in regards to appearance, but, again, there's no proof in regards to like Bigfoot, skinwalker, it's all legend, it's all folklore, it's all conjecture, it's all... right. You know, but 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 that's that's the cool thing about it is it is legend, it is folklore. But why are there still being people reporting sightings of it now? It predates the existence of Europeans and and on the continent, and yet they still talk about it to this day. Same as Bigfoot. That predates any kind of. Actually, there's there's some tribal beliefs that, and also where Asians said that they came to the United States way before we ever hit the uh, Europeans hit the. Uh, East Coast, they hit the West Coast, and it's supposed to be some old legends there is that they brought Bigfoot here, and they, they dropped them off here. Really? Yeah, there's some old legends about that from Asian uh, lore. Well, it happens well, we when don't you don't get them neutered so and get sprayed. Get... <laughs> right? I mean, like, you know, we don't want them, so we're going to drop them off over there. They used them. They, they, they worked with them, and, and worked with them as far as being a part of the crew and, and, and almost like a to lift and carry things because of their size and strength. Hmm. Oh. Jason, like just smart out. I was going to say, I'm, brains have I've never before. heard that. No, I've not heard that one. See, if you go with me Sunday to our uh, North American Dog Man Project meeting, you might hear about more of this stuff. I missed the meeting because we're also interviewing with Penny. Yeah, I know. I saw that. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah. Okay, so I find it fascinating on a folklore perspective how similar themes run through um, from various cultures on the same kind of subject. Oh, I find that amazing. I find it absolutely fascinating, and we find similar themes. However, in regards to skinwalkers, it, other than the shape shifting perspective, this is quite. From what I was reading, it's very specific. Whereas the shape shifter, from our perspective, is slightly different. Okay. Because yeah, I'm sure things I understand like. Understand what you mean? Yeah, I'm trying to follow. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dave. No, I said I don't think I understand what you mean. Okay, well, put it this way, right? So a shapeshifter can appear as anybody you want. We agree on that point. Right. Yeah, the power is in the name. We agree on that point. Maybe. 
Okay. Why do you not agree with that? It's well, it's all hypothetical or theoretical. Well, the whole subject is <laughs> true. Everything about the paranormal is. Um, you know. Well, you've heard me talk about... about the paranormal too. <laughs> well, true. This is true. Um, now, if you accidentally lock eyes with a skinwalker, they can absorb themselves into your body and take control of your actions. That I don't talk to them too. That explains a lot. <laughs> skinwalkers can also have the ability to enchant the power of corpses and use the substance as a poison dust on victims. Oh, now they're talking like voodoo. Right. Yeah. You know, there are certain things that I'm like, hmm, where has this all come from? You know, it's, it's but it's what's interesting is it's one of those archety- archetypal stories. One of those things that are kind of ingrained culturally to the point that it's almost like a genetic memory, though. Okay. Because, you know, I I sometimes think that the world we have today is quite different than the world maybe thousands and thousands of years ago. I'm not sure how many thousands, but, uh, you know, I I kind of wonder if the world, there was, was real magic in the world at one point in the past. You know, that sorcerers might have been real. Dragons might have really existed at some point in the past. That's why there's stories of dragons, you know. Right. Um, what What if the world was a different place, the energy of the world was a different place, and there was people who could control those energies, and then over time, that energy's changed and dissolved or whatever, went away. Changed dimensions, perhaps. Or changed dimensions, mm-hmm. yeah. And now we're visited by Bigfoots. <laughs> it's a very fairy tale world, though, isn't it? If you look at it, that's a very fairy tale world of looking at it. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. myths and legends yeah. and magic and dragons. And, you know, when you look at fairy tales, it's a very fairy tale way of looking at it. You know, evil queens, evil witches. You know, um, good versus evil, love conquers all, that kind of thing. It's very, very fairy tale. I'm not saying it's not based in something. I don't I don't want to use the word fact there, but in something. I do think obviously going back in time, people were a lot more in tune with the nature and yes, it would have been a completely different world people lived in. They haven't got the I think it changed in in regards to when the Industrial Revolution hit. But there's there's a lot of people that are still in tune with the, with the Earth now, but not like it used to be. I, and I think that's where, like Dave said, it, because there was some form of magic, but it wasn't magic in, in the essence that a lot of us think sometimes. Because a lot of people think magic now. They, they think some little magician up there doing card tricks, and it's nowhere near. No, not mm. even close. Yeah, no, I'm thinking someone actually being able to manipulate forms of energies and transform mm-hmm. things and mutate things and and, right. and so forth. Uh, you know that, that alchemy, that, alchemy. Well, alchemy it was just one form of it, but yeah, and and I think that's I think that's something something that may have existed just because it's so ingrained. And and one of the things that I find very interesting is. If you look at a lot of stories that get passed down and passed down and passed down, the Bible being one example, all the stories in the Bible didn't predate the Bible from and come from other texts in various forms and variations on a theme. And it's kind of interesting when you start looking at it from that perspective. What if all this stuff really comes from time way back in the you know the way back time machine it and because it disappeared over time it then becomes myth and le- legend because we don't have recorded history going back that far but we have okay. word of mouth and we have word of and as we all have ever played the telephone game as a kid where you mm-hmm. someone says something one person's here and they, they turn the next person's and that person's here and it, he goes 20 people next thing you know the whole the whole thing changed by the time it got to the end and, oh, we call that Chinese whispers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we call it the telephone game here. But the oh, okay. <laughs> but, but they, but you know, they, you know, that that's just what happens with the word of mouth. As a story is passed over time, it changes. 
and people change it based on to make it more believable or more uh, understandable by the current culture, by the listener. Yeah. I'll go with that. So is it the written word then that has changed the world? Ah, there's a concept. Why are you making me think so damn hard tonight? What, what was it you just said? I'm sorry. Is it the written word then that has changed the concepts? Well, it, it, even Our written word has changed has. over over times over time. Um, so, you know, it's 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 one of those it's one of those things that written word you you can translate some from certain languages never never a direct translation of a word to a direct word in another language necessarily all the time. And so what you find is when people translate things, they get the gist of it, or maybe they miss the point completely and mis misinterpret it. Yes. But if there is power in a word and power in a name, or there was, um, what, one thing that makes me a believer of this, that this existed at some point, would be why the best kept secret in the UK of my favorite TV show that you know I love so much, Doctor Who. We don't know <laughs> his real name. Yeah, we don't know his real name, do we? No, he's just the Doctor. And, the they, doctor. and they, they've always hinted through the entire show, all 50 years of it, you know, is that, you know, his name is kept secret. Mm-hmm. Because no one, no one should know his name. True. So does that go with the power is in the name? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, it, for someone to know his name, they would have power over him. Power over him, yeah. Mm -hmm. So even, you don't ever divulge even, your real name. Even if that power was simply to know who he really was in his origins to unravel all of time by traveling back in time and killing him as a child, like, you know, Hitler... The whole Hitler paradox, you know. Mm -hmm. It's you know. It, that oh even, my God! Now we're going into like times, you know, timey time wimey space. space thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, spacey wacy timey wimey, wimey thing. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love that episode. Not the angels thing, but you know, um, I love that episode. Anyway, so Max has a question. If there were dinosaurs at one time and even Komodo dragons today, so why couldn't dragons and other cryptid creatures not have existed? We, See, I think, I think there are too many legends surrounding things like dragons and, you know, dragons in particular, I would say. Right. But, 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 but you've we've found, made them legends. You have, but you've also found proof of dinosaurs with archaeological findings. But, but then again... If you were an ancient person, not even that far back, back in the Middle Ages, and you found dinosaur bones, what would you think it was? You had no idea the concept of what dinosaurs were back That's then. True. So you find this giant beast. It had to be some form of giant dragon or something. Your mind's going to create what it is. So is it truly mythology, or is it truly imagination taking over what reality really is and making it what you think it is, even though it's not that? Okay, so there are so many legends. Okay, let's talk dragons then. So... There are so many legends we around the like, dragons. I know. How did with that transpire? I want to go into the demon house in a minute, so don't worry, we'll we'll oh, evolve. Damn. <laughs> and we will evolve conversation. Anyway, um so if you look at it, okay, so you've got so many legends and myths of somebody going along and slaying a dragon and you know, true love's always involved and virgins and sacrifice and what all are that those? Crap. I don't know. We don't have them in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Essex <laughs> girls. <laughs> Hashtag just saying. <laughs> I'm going to get into so much trouble next time I go out in the town. <laughs> they'll be like, that's the girl that says those are virgins in Essex. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, that's true then. Anyway, um, we'll change the subject. Um, where was I? Dragons. Yes, so many legends and um, surrounding dragons where, you know, have to slay a dragon. There's always a sacrifice involved, blah, 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 blah. And... Um, so, okay, so is that because they found a dinosaur bones and there so happened from, from an archaeological point of view, 
somebody that's had a sword that's near that, so they've put two and two together and made up a story? Or is that literally a legend that's been passed down through time? Because that goes way back. That that goes way, way back to even um, the Mayan, I believe. Miss, I did a show on dragons. Oh, and that's, that's what I'm saying, though. They, they, if these ancient people even go way, way, way back there, like you said, and you find these bones, what are they going to do? They're not going to, they're not going to think of a dinosaur. They don't have that conceptual idea to be able to put that together. Exactly. <coughs> I mean, like I said, I would not be, want to be the one to be elected to tell the Asians there was no such thing as dragons. Their culture, oh, no. even to this day, it's a huge <laughs> symbolic thing. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that either. No. <laughs> Richard, we so need to catch up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I've had to catch up with you for ages. Um, sea dragons do exist, Richard. <laughs> Luke, Luke Walker says that they were Doctor Who. We're going back to the Doctor Who name thing. Um, they revealed it last season. His name is Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> And Doctor is a title derived from his name. His first name is Doctor. No. No, now there's a concept for you. See, who we're talking about? I haven't watched the latest series, so I'm, it's a, the Doctor I Who. I have thing, never bit, you know, watched Doctor Who. Have you never watched? Oh my God, never. really? Teresa and I neither have ever We've sat never and watched, watched a single, it. not one minute of a Doctor Who show. Oh. <gasps> You shouldn't have told me that, because next time I see you, I'm going to chain you down and, and make you watch one. Talk dirty to me, Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you are missing a trick, so, all I'm saying. If we were going to watch it, would you do the old show or the new one? New. No. Definitely new. You know, the, I love Doctor Who all the way back from the beginning, but the, there's a there's a, the, back in the old days, back before you know CGI and other cool th- things, you know, like you know sets that look real. Uh, <laughs> they were on low budget, and it was more of an imagination kind of thing. Uh, now, now I've gotten used to CGI and, and all that stuff. I, I kind of expect it. <laughs> You've gotten spoiled. I have gotten spoiled. Yes, that's right. Oh, There's nothing wrong with that. Wow. Wow, well, what? I'm not. I mean, I say I watched. It depends on who the doctor is. To be fair, for me, that's really shallow. I I acknowledge. Yes, yes, it is. But at least you admit to it. <laughs> Very much so. But a million to your promise half the battle. Apparently, the other has given a shit. See, I love David. I can't believe we talk about Doctor Who. Um, I love David Tennant. I loved Matt yeah. Smith. I thought he was awesome. Yep. Lost interest with Peter Capaldi. Yeah, he kind of he kind of dragged it out. <laughs> Lost interest really quickly. Too old. <laughs> well, he's not. He's not wow. the oldest. Do- he's not the oldest person to play Doctor Who, though. No, but you've got to remember that the oldest person that played Doctor Who was like sort of in my infancy, so I sort of like wasn't really into it then. This has went so stray. <laughs> no, I've got it right off topic, haven't I? Anyway, we're on Doctor Who. I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. This, we, don't, we don't always have to talk paranormal. We can talk whatever the frick we want to. Right. That's true. That's what we do. There's no staying on topic on this show, is there? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I love some of the concepts, though, that if we're going to talk Doctor Who, I love some of the concepts it brings in. It brings in all sorts of paranormal um, concepts, doesn't it? Time slips, time dimensions, you know, space, time, timey, why me? <laughs> it's like, I mean, whoa, 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 what? I mean, honestly, Dave, give me the quote because I love that quote. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Thank you. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Love that bit. You know, it's the weeping angels it, that are that are really stone when you look at them because they're they're uh, quantum locked. But when you yeah. when you're not looking at them, they can move and kill you. <laughs> scary, scary crap that was. Wow. Seriously, you guys are missing a trick if you've not watched Doctor Who. Seriously, I've missed a lot of tricks. 
Honestly, I'm a guide. And then the Daleks. The Daleks. You have to love the Daleks. Nothing nothing like a a creature stuffed in a robot uh, with a plunger and a uh, a spatula for (laughs) a weapon. Or wait, a whisk. uh, Whisk, whisk, sorry. (laughs) That was was Cyborgs. Cyborgs. Cyberman, yep. Cybermen, sorry, see, I don't even know the right terminology. Delete. Oh my god, I'm that bad. Sorry. Exterminate. Yeah, you see, even if you haven't watched it, you know these concepts. I mean, I have to say, man being transformed into half human machine is quite a horrible concept, really, isn't it? Wasn't that on Star Trek? Cyborgs. Yeah. Star Trek's Doctor next generation. Who? No, Doctor Who first is, brought that into. Resistance is futile. You will be. It, right? Cyborgs. Yeah. Star Trek. Next oh. generation. Cyborgs. That's where it came from. I know. So, okay. So, that, so take a leap, right? We're going to take a massive leap of, of assumption <laughs> at this point. Shape-shifting. Uh-oh. Oh, I know. Uh, shape-shifting. So, from a human into an animal. Now, we've hit. The technological age, we're now shape shifting into machines. Okay. I told you it was a huge leap of assumption. <laughs> Wait, we're we're shape shifting into machines. Well, it's the same. Or are machines shape shifting into us, or are we we are in control of that because we would shape, choose that shape shifting into an animal, which is all we had to work with at that time back in took deer whereas now we can evolve that into <laughs> i'm really reaching I, I get this guys i'm reaching you got, you've got rubber arms right now i'm like proper reaching into like <laughs> trying to link the two subjects together here <laughs> why just enjoy the subject for what it is oh okay fine i don't even know why i'm bothering okay so before we finish, <laughs> we've got a few minutes. Did you see the Demon House? No. No. Why? When I go see the Demon House? Oh, it's on YouTube. I would. It's... I'm going to say this on air. Anybody can go tell Zach Baggins if they want to. I think I would rather castrate myself with a plastic butter knife than to go watch his dumbass movie. Mate, seriously, it was well interesting. Mate, it could be interesting. It's Zach Baggins and his everything's a demon and I'm a chicken shit. But look, I look no, busted in my no, spray on seriously, hands. This was less like that than ever. I, I have to say, I was actually it. quite impressed at times. At times. But it's... It's his perspective of what he says he's captured there and everything else. Nobody else could investigate. Nobody else could do anything. And from what I've heard, after he did his little filming there, he had the house destroyed and tore down. Right. He tore there down. was real reasons for that, though. Oh, was, according to him, there's real reasons. It wasn't just him. Oh, my God. Oh, and every that? other person it... he paid to be in the script. No, okay, I get that point. Yeah, I get that point. But Answer me a question. You saw it. Answer me a question. Yes. I have heard... Uncountless people making accusations and statements and stuff that Aaron's not even in the movie. No, he's not. Why is that? If they're such a big team together and it's such a great, good case, why in the hell would his right-hand man, the guy's been with him from the very beginning, and in the rest of them, not be involved? All right. Think about this. Maybe it was Aaron's choice because the house was so bad. Mm -hmm. Because... They all had issues with attachments. Because he knew career. Zach was so full of shit and it was going to be such a badass movie that he really didn't want to be involved with the bullshit and lies. He wanted to take his reputation any farther down the toilet than what it already is. Hold on. I thought Aaron had sort of like left. Mm. So Aaron's now left about the same time this movie comes out. No, this I, I thought been... it happened a while ago, but I'm not. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure because no. I don't keep up with the damn show because it's ridiculous. No, I don't either. No, and neither do I. To I, be fair, I, but I have Zach Baggins may be one of the nicest people on this planet. I give him no credibility and no credentials in anything that he does in best game. He's been proven to to be willing to fake anything and make any statement to keep himself popular and on TV. Therefore, he has absolutely no credibility with me. None. Anything he puts out on the film, I don't want to see. I don't. I don't want to see a show or anything else. They've proven, and, and he's admitted to, 
that oh yeah, well we kind of embellish things. No, then then you ha- then you're you're nothing but an entertainer. You're not a paranormal investigator. You're a freaking TV entertainer or a movie pr- entertainer. Then do that. Th- then say that you are. Don't try to say that you're one thing and act like another. You have no credibility with me, and I, I could give it. I, I wouldn't give it. I'm only watch it when it comes on free. If it comes on Netflix, I will not watch it then either. Okay, I watched it today, and I have to say. I am um, with you in regards to, oh, it's a demon. You, no, right? Don't right. do it. I'm with you on that in regards to the series. I do like a bit of Zach, not going to lie. I'm a little, you yeah, know. you like him in a different way. Paranormal crush, I suppose you'd call it. You know. We, well, we're sorry, like we're sorry for that for you then. Because I he, do apologize. Because he's a little them. bit of a womanizer. I don't care, you know. Yeah, a bit of a woman. <laughs> um, you know, whatever. But I watched this today, and I thought, okay, so you have to take out the dramatics. There is a lot of dramatics in there. You have to take it out of the context that it's a movie. It's obviously for ratings. It's obviously a TV program. Okay, so break it down. Okay, so you can question everything in regards to all the witnesses he had. You can take it out of context in regards to all the physical effects that people, not just him, but people who have lived in the house and stuff like that, um, have had. There were certain things that I thought, as a paranormal investigator, I would have possibly done, I probably would have done differently. When he was, like, sealed up in the house, um, there were things that were captured that are questionable because of low quality tech the guy that's got all that money has low quality tech well it was a bit grainy let's put it that way but the guy that has all that money didn't really focus on the physical they focused on there was sounds that were made that you heard hell I can fart in the dark and make it sound like a demon I think well, yeah, I mean, there is always that argument, so you have to always keep an open mind in regards to that. It was really, in. I have to say, I found that fascinating to watch, bearing in mind it's a TV program, it's a movie, it's, you know, ghost, advent, ghost adventures background. But there were certain things in there that I found incredibly interesting. Things that he looked into, he looked into geomagnetic fields, and then the guy had a major organ failure. One of his team crew had a major mental meltdown and has gone seriously weird since. He's had 666, like, tattooed onto his hands. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's all for the propaganda and all for the publicity stunts. I, I, I don't buy anything that they have to say. I truly don't. I, no, I, guys. I'm yes. a complete moron. Sorry, I'm replying to no, Max. No, no. I could break it down quick for you, Kerry. Zach is a moron. No. I don't think so. I have to say. If no, he's very burn. Oh, my God, you Americans are really harsh on your he's your not, American no, counterparts. No, no. He's, don't get me wrong. He's very intelligent. He's making a fortune of being a bullshitter. They're in the media business, but when you break it down, the story came out, the story broke. He had the opportunity to buy this house, right? If I had the money and I had that backing, trust me, if that came up, that opportunity came up, I'd snatch it. You know what I mean? Yes, would I make a movie? Yes, I would. Would I try and break it down in a proper paranormal way? Yes, I would. Would I pr- uh, publicize it in the way that he's done? Yes, I would, because you need to make your money back. It's a business at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, there are serious points that were raised within that. And you have to say, okay, they're the facts that he's laid out in that movie. Now, as a paranormal field, can we look at those details? Can we verify those facts? Can we back up what he's put out in that movie? No, yes, you a lot of that no, you, you would, but a lot of that you should be able to. But you can't because it's his rendition, his story, his place, and it's now destroyed. That no one else can go in there and do any kind of follow up or anything else. It's gone. Not within He's the house, absolutely. but the witness statements, the physical medical records of those people, you should be able to do. No, Max, he yeah. isn't a respectable paranormal investigator, but that's no different from a ghost hunter in the UK. But, but, it's a two uh, different things. There, there, we all agree that there's a difference between a ghost hunter and a paranormal investigator. I, I, I agree with that. But I'm saying 
there's no way to okay so he's got his witnesses of course it would tell the same story that they had he just told that he they just told him because they're probably getting paid by him or getting some kind of royalties off their story because that he had that he had to buy their story to be able to sell their story to make the movie so therefore they're getting money from this so i'm going to tell whatever the hell they want me to you put a jack in my damn hand that's the problem with the things here in the united states a lot of it's centralized around capitalism capitalism and making money and that's all he is about doing, he gives no credibility to the field, no credibility to himself. Like you said, he had substandard equipment, substandard filming. Why? The man that has all this money has crew the vacuum and everything else, and he films up substandard shit? No, that discredits you even more. It doesn't change the story of the house pre-involvement from media. But it's just a story still. None of it can be validated or proven by anybody but Zach Baggins. Disagree because there was incidences that happened pre media involvement that involved a f- like professional people in the medical police, field, the s- police, yeah, police, doctors, nurses, doctors, exactly. Teresa, um, they even had children's services out there, and all that was was all of that was pre media, yeah, it was recorded and it was documented. Before any of document is what these people had a strange experience, a paranormal experience does not make it any credibility of it being a demon or anything else. That's his interpretation. No, Mary, am disagree. I, am, I wrong, am I wrong on this or or not? But did not the the one child, I believe it was a boy, and I yes. I may be wrong on this. Didn't he have an episode at the hospital? He did. He walked backwards. He up walked backwards the wall. up the wall. And that was witnessed pre-media. This is pre-media, everybody. Kevin Chris will smack you. Oh, I quite enjoy that, but carry on. Um, that was pre-media involvement. And that was witnessed by a child, we would call them a child support agency kind of person, right. like a social services kind of situation in the UK. I, don't I, know what I understand what you're saying. So I those things were witnessed pre-media. Okay, I witnessed some things too that nobody believes a damn thing about. Where is the video evidence? Did, there was no cameras in the room. They didn't. I can claim, make any claim I want to, especially when somebody's going to buy it and make it into a story. You have to watch the credibility of that right there. I'm sorry, but you, anybody can make that story up. It, I, I, but, Trent, if it is, but if it is already documented in legal medical records, police records, I get all that. Of that before, that's what we're saying. This was all documented. I absolutely before. get that. But it still doesn't make any case to prove the claims. That's what I'm it trying doesn't. to say. No, I'm not Just saying like anything, it does prove like it. Saying, I'm saying it makes it more interesting because these things were pre-documented before any any media, whether it be Zach, whether it be ABC, whether it be I don't know BBC, you know, whatever side of the pond you want to look at. Pre-media, these things they took the child to hospital because he wasn't acting normal, right? So they they're in the hospital. They've got yes. They've got a situation where um, uh, social services in the UK, it would be classed as, are involved in regards to welfare for the children. And then they see a child walk backwards up a wall. I mean, come on. Doctors, social services, that sort of thing are going to be like, whoa. Yes, okay, you could argue the point. They only made that up afterwards, but that doesn't change the records that were made at the time that are on record and, from and record, police okay. and those okay. kind of things. I, I'm going to okay, interject Dave. some common sense here. Records have never been backdated before. Re- oh, yeah, well, okay. let, let's leave that. So all fake. Let, leave that one for a second. But records that you've you all have seen yourselves from what source? No, to be fair, all I can say is what story I know about that situation pre film pre you know just things that have been banded about so i can't prove that and i'm not going to i'm not that interested in regards to um look into it that deeply myself i find it incredibly interesting though from an investigation point of view yes we can't now investigate the demon house you know because he's ripped it down we can't you cover your tracks <laughs> Or, My story is the only story. or it really is that bad, or okay. was that bad? Well, I'm going to also interject another thought here. Um, it's almost up. How, how <laughs> much? How much people? I mean, how many people remember the Blair Witch? Do you know that oh, was I remember, a pure the, media thing, though? It, it, it was it. a pure marketing 
expertly done marketing effort because before the, months and months and months, almost yes. up to a year before the movie came out, they had saturated stories online, making mm -hmm. it a believable story. So when people Very started true. seeing it, they're like, "Was this a documentary? Real documentary about this? What the yeah. hell?" And people started looking into it and going out to this 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 town and looking for you know evidence of stuff and looking into True. it and stuff and and so you know it was but it was all manufactured from the get-go and we already know no, that true. that that zach baggins is very popular for for and his show in the media and and well let's just let's just face it it's called reality television but it's anything but reality it's all scripted True. so right. but you know they're very well known, and Aaron Goodwin admitted it on on air on a pod on another sh show podcast uh, a while back that they act things out and invent things. That's not unusual on a paranormal television show, is it? So how, not, how and can I we, take your how point. Can we not no, I do take the whole your point in regards to Blair Witch. No, I do de definitely take your point because when Blair Witch hit the UK, bearing in mind we didn't have so much that we had that they, they released a documentary pre the film release and so that was really interesting i can't believe we've run out of time and we're on this subject because we could go on for ages on this one um to be but, continued next week because i'm still gonna hold with what i said anything you he's need in, to I watch, no it. watch it okay. I'm not, no i'm not gonna waste my money if we're gonna do a show on it you need to watch that documentary so we can Love, discuss it properly listen to me I wouldn't waste my money on it, and I wouldn't waste yours if you bought a ticket and sent it to me. I wouldn't walk across the street and pee in his mouth if his guts were on fire. I have you no don't use for have the guy. to. It's on the Parasite Radio group page. Pop over there. Have a look at it. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for listening. We've talked shapes. <laughs> we've talked Nav Navajo. <laughs> Myths and legends. We've talked Doctor Who. And we've now got to the demon house. <laughs> right. Wow. Wow. Thank you guys for listening. Sorry I got so adamant tonight. And, uh, no, I'm not. That's just who I am. <laughs> uh, say goodnight. Thanks ever so much. Good, good, night. good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.